Welcome back to The Man in the Middle. I am your host, Bill West. Today we're going to be looking at a, uh, I believe this is an opinion piece on Wired.com. Uh, happens to be an opinion that I believe, and we all know that the uh, the driving force of my channel is what I think is cool, whether it be news or swag or whatever. This I think is cool, so I'm reporting on it. And if the only person who watches this video is me, then, you know, that's the way it is. But I hope you find it interesting. I hope there's uh, Amber fans out there who uh, will tune into this and maybe uh, get behind it as well. Let's go to the article. The world needs a Chronicles of Amber show. This is 5-21-21 at 11.34 a.m. on yeah, the 21st. <laughs> this is by Buddy Mays. And, okay, I can't, I can't <laughs> read the, his, the, the author's name. I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, all credit to the author. Rogers Lasney burst into the science fiction scene in the 1960s with a series of groundbreaking stories that combined pulp sensibility with elusive pyrotechnic prose. One of his many admirers is writer F. Brett Cox, who just published a book about the author. It's kind of hard to overstate the impact his work has had on the people who really love it, Cox says in episode 467 of Geek's Guide to the Galaxy podcast. In my own fiction, I've arguably spent my entire career just trying to write something that would affect anybody as strongly as the last sentence of A Rose of Ecclesiastes, affected me the first time I read it. In the 70s and 80s, the last name achieved phenomenal success with his 10-volume Amber series, but critics felt that the sword and sorcery Tale was a waste of his talents. Cox believes that the critical consensus about Amber is at best an oversimplification. There's often a gap between what we as academics or critics want literature to do and what literature actually does, he says. And I think that the Amber, Amber series is a very good example of what literature can actually do. It gives the readers a world to lose themselves in and be a part of. It just hooks them. And while Zelazny's critical reputation may have declined over the years, his brisk, playful storytelling style has had an outsized influence on several generations of fantasy writers. I quoted from a few younger writers at the end of the book how Zelazny had influenced their work, Cox says. And I know full well that with at least one of them, and maybe all of them, Amber was the gateway. The Amber books were what brought them in. Zelazny remains an, uh, mostly unknown outside of science fiction, but Cox is hopeful a film or a TV ab adaptation could make him a household name, as happened with Lassie's close, close friend, George R. R. Martin. A few years ago, there was talk that Robert Kirkman, who did The Walking Dead, was wanting to do a miniseries of The Chronicles of Amber, Cox says, but there have been hints that maybe that would lead to some kind of larger awareness. Listen to the complete interview with F. Brent Cox in episode 467 of The Geek's Guide to the Galaxy. That's, uh, the link is above. And check out some highlights from the discussion below. F. Brent Cox on Zelazny's personality. Zelazny was always linked with Samuel R. Delaney, and he was also good friends with Harlan Ellison. It's an interesting contrast because they were strong contemporaries and very well known. And of course, we all know how much Harlan Ellison has written about himself, and Delaney has done some extensive memoir writing. Zelazny just didn't. I talked to people as much as I could who knew Zelazny, among people I know or had access to, and it was really a strikingly universal consensus of how well regarded he was, personally. Nobody had a bad word to say about him, and that was very nice to learn. But also several people did note that, as the saying goes, he kept himself to himself, that there was always a little bit of distance there. F. Brett Cox on the Zelazny criticism. In terms of monograph studies of Zelazny, there was an early one from Carl Yoke, who was a longtime academic in science fiction studies, and also a close friend of Zelazny. They grew up together in Ohio. And then there was Krulik's book, and then there was Lynn Skull's book. There was a quote from Lynn Skull in her introduction to one of the volumes of the NESFA press collected stories, and her as assertion that Zelazny wrote some of these seemingly more controversial sword and sorcery tales because he liked that stuff. He grew up reading it. He genuinely loved that particular branch of science fic of genre fiction, and he wrote it because he wanted to. F. Brett Cox, A Literary Reputation. The issue of literary reputation is endlessly complicated and endlessly fascinating. 
Certainly Bradbury is still the science fiction writer people know, and, if, and even if they don't read science fiction, and Philip K. Dick has joined that company as well. It, but if you also look at Zelazny's contemporaries, people like Delaney, like Ursula K. Le Guin, like Joanna Rush, preeminently like J.G. Ballard, they all gained reputations outside of science fiction. Michael Moorcock is very well known within the contemporary British literature, and Zelazny just really didn't. And I don't have a set answer for that. F. Brett Cox on Zelazny and Moorcock. When Moorcock was editing New Worlds, then they serialized Nor Norman Spinrad's novel Bug Jack Brown. It was denounced to Parliament for publishing obscene material, and Zelazny was caught up in that too. He published a good bit of Creatures of Light and Darkness in New Worlds and some of his short fiction there. A very interesting moment in the correspondence I read at the library between Zelazny and Moorcock was where Moorcock was just saying, give me more, write something. It's stunning how highly the other writers of his day regarded his work, how the other writers in the 1960s were absolutely astonished at what he was doing. Zelazny was a hero of mine. I've, uh, I think it was my sophomore year in high school that I found, or that I was introduced to the world of uh, Amber and such, Oops, this way, by my uncle. Uh, he gave me a copy of Nine Princes in Amber and the guns of Avalon, and I tore through them within a day. It was magic, absolute magic. And it took me a couple of uh, months to finish up the, the trilogy, or the series. It was Quintet? Quintet. Uh, five books. Uh, the first five books of the Chronicles of Amber are absolutely uh, great. To me, they are they're the epitome of writing. People can talk about it. Asimov or Herbert or uh, Martin Bradbury. And uh, as great as they are, and absolutely wonderful. I love Amber. I mean, I love all those other authors. And, you know, and the authors that have came through since, but nothing has affected me the way Zelazny's Amber has. This is a recent copy of Amber that I picked up. It's number six in the Fantasy Masterwork series. I don't have the other books. I just have this, this copy of Amber. Uh, I also have the five initial uh, copies of Amber, the first printings. I have uh, a couple of uh, book club editions of the heart, the two two volume set. Uh, Amber means everything to me, <laughs> and. I think it'd be a great thing if we were able to get a uh, Amber TV series or an Amber movie, but I believe his estate is, is really holding tight on that, and I understand why. There was a couple of uh, books that came out not too long after Zelazny's death. They weren't great books. <laughs> but uh, my one regret is that I, I never was able to meet him at a con. But, uh, you know, this is, this is getting a little bit more maudlin. But tell me what you think. Would it be a great thing? Would it be a good thing for, uh, you know, an Amber TV series? If you think so, you know, give me that thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. If you're not, why not? It's free. It doesn't cost you anything except for, you know, listen to me a couple of times a week. And there's my buttercup again. <laughs> you take care. Once again, I am Bill. I am the man in the middle. I hope you have a great day.